a well-made turret board looks great and today I'm going to show you how to build one using the press fitting method with just a few tools and a little bit of your time so let's press on through <music> A lot of different ways to make a turret board and a lot of different tools that you could use. Well I've picked just a few tools to make a really great turret board. First of those is going to be a good hammer. We need a number 43 drill bit. We need our turret setter. We need our hobby knife. We're going to have our turrets and our board. We'll have to have a template. Uh, this template that I have in this case is, got, uh, is laid out for a Marshall 18 watt clone. Uh, I've laid the, the terminals out to where they are no more than two inches apart because that's a, that's a good size to have for when you've got both large components as well as the, the longest leads of the half watt resistors. They're separated by about three eighths of an inch. Three eighths is a good, is a good amount. And I've got a couple more in the middle that are, uh, that are situated in between the two inches. If you want an example of the template, you, by all means you can use mine. It'll be on the Tube Depot website underneath board materials. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut my template out right along the edge. And so what we're going to do is we're going to press fit these turrets into the board, which is an extremely solid way of constructing a turret board without having to go through all the expense of buying the swaging tools. This template fits the turret board. I want to cut little corners off the edges. This will this will give me some room to, to tape the corners on. I'm going to line it up with any turret mounting or any turret construction. Really what you're doing is you're, you've got to, you got to build your layout. You need to um, transfer your layout to your epoxy board, G10 board. That is by putting holes or some kind of marks through the template onto the board. Then you're going to drill the holes and then you're going to mount the turrets. It's really only a four step process. I'm going to take my hobby knife and I'm going to make a little mark at each point. I'm going to spin the hobby knife at that spot. And there's a faster way to do this if you happen to have the particular tool. If you have a center punch, you can center punch each one of these holes. And what's nice about this is it goes in a little bit deeper, making a better, better spot for the uh, drill bit. The center punch is not an expensive item. You can pick those up at, at most hardware stores as well. All right, once you've removed your template, you want to put it aside. Don't throw it away yet. And what you'll have is you'll have a, a, uh, your epoxy board with all the little marks on it where you're going to drill holes. Now I encourage you at this point here is to take a permanent marker of some kind and put on here top. <laughs> Otherwise you may end up getting confused and put the turrets on the wrong side of the board. Two methods that I use to put holes in a glass epoxy board. One of those is with the normal hand drill. Uh, number two I can use a hand punch which takes a lot of effort but it makes a very straight hole and uh, much easier. Right now I'm going to show you how to use the hand drill. I've got a very specific drill bit. This is a number 43 drill bit. The holes for the turrets that we'll be using is 332nd, but for me to press fit this, I need the hole to be just a little bit smaller, and that number 43 comes out to the exact size I need. You can get this particular drill bit from TubeDepot.com. It's important to keep the drill as straight as possible, especially using a hand drill, so that the hole won't be, it'll be the right size. That's it. As long as I put that drill bit right there in the little divot that I made on the glass epoxy, it will go straight down and it will go straight. Drilling the holes takes quite a lot of time and a problem with hand drilling the holes is that they don't, aren't perfectly in line. You can't get them perfectly in line. They're going to be off a little bit just because of the hand drill and the way the drill works. As it spins, it has a tendency to off-center the hole. This is an alternative to drilling the holes. I have a hand, a hand punch. Now the hand punch has got several different uh, different die for making different holes and you can buy one of these hand punches in, in uh, local hardware stores. They're not very expensive. About $20 or so. I'm going to put in the 332nd inch die. When it goes to the epoxy board, it punches out the hole but it compresses the sides to outwards. So when you pull this back out again, it's actually not 332nd. It's a little bit smaller which works perfect for our, for our pressing in. To get this started, the die has a little a, a little bit of uh, a very little small point on it and that point should sit right in and this is we got to put that point right in the in the mark that you made on the board once it's on the mark I have to put this against the table because it's kind of it's tough you lean into it and it'll punch a hole 
through the G10. And now that is a perfectly round hole. Now a series of those will make a board, all the, all the, the turrets line up perfectly. <clears throat> the bigger the hole, the harder it is to press through. And so I am not, I'm, I'm giving up on using the, the hand press for holes bigger than, than this through this eighth inch material. What I'm doing here is I'm just spinning the hobby knife around in that little circle, in the little hole that I just drilled. And it's, um, it's cutting off the excess uh, fiberglass, the stuff that, that didn't get punched away or, or drilled away. An alternative method to using the hobby knife to deburr the holes, you can use another drill bit in your hand and just put it in the hole and spin it. Okay, now that I've completed three of the four tasks involved in making a good turret board, I've did my layout. I've transferred my layout to the board. I've drilled all the holes for the turrets. The next step, the last and final step, is putting the turrets in. This is a really easy step. It's not hard at all. And I'm gonna show you the fastest way first. You're gonna take one of the turrets, and they're small. They're tiny little turrets. And with your hand, uh, I'm gonna put in one of the drilled holes. I'm gonna slightly press it into the hole. It's important to have a rubberized mat underneath your workbench, uh, underneath your work material. And the reason is the, the turret is going to press through the bottom of this. You don't want it to hit against here because it won't go all the way through. I don't know if a blanket or a towel will work. I've been using this. This, this comes from the local hardware store. It's the, the same stuff they use for liners in uh, drawers for your kitchen. This is a turret setter. It's actually a piece of iron with a hole all the way down it that fits this turret perfectly. And they aren't very expensive. What you do is once you press it in there, you're going to put the turret setter right over the top of that. And with your hammer, you're going to bang this in. You've got another turret that started off as a hex head screw. This is a three inch one, I believe. And I cut off the threads, leaving just the shaft portion. I filed off the end flat, and then I drilled an eighth inch hole down the middle. All right, and what you do is you take that turret and you set it in that hole. I put the turret setter over and make sure you got to get it straight up and down. And that's it. It's in there and it won't come out. It's perfect. And it may cut a hole in the mat. It may not. But what it does do, it sits flush all the way against the board and that's what you want. My favorite method, if I had to build, build something on my dining room table real easily, is just using the, the turret setter over a rubberized mat with the turret and putting it in because you can build a turret board like this in a very short amount of time. There it is. There's the finished board. I like that red. The red looks really good. This is a really good turret board that anybody could build in their dining room table. Until next time, I'm Rob Hull.